the field is under the first caution of this race due to the teenager, the 18-year-old Ben Rhodes coming to grief. Keep an eye on this. Yeah, he was running ninth. First start in the Xfinity Series. You can just see he was a little high on the exit there of turn four. Does a good job of keeping it out of the inside wall for a good while, but a little damage there. Yeah. Tough place to come with no practice. It really is, and that's what, as unfortunate as it may sound, what the Xfinity Series is for. A young man like Ben Rhodes, he just learned that how tough this racetrack can be. We knew we have a competition coming. A competition yellow coming. No one was really around him. That one was just lost control. Well, let's have a listen to what the young man had to say to his team. I'm sorry, guys. I had a super loose race car and I pushed it too hard. Had a super loose race car and I just pushed it a little too far. I'd rather be the points leader. It sounds like a good story when you're second as we have, uh, whoa, the four. I believe that's Ross Dakota Chastain with an accident. Dakota Armstrong down low. Looks like that car has been in the grass. Picked up a little bit of grass. We're good. We just got grass. Dakota Armstrong and Ross Chastain. Bring out the yellow for the second time. Very early stage in the High Sense 200. It certainly had a bizarre ending. Oh, and what has happened to Ty Dillon? We were just talking what about. Happened, Billy? We let off and it just turned right. And this is the difference. This is a full year long points battle, not just a chase. So they're only going to have five weeks to recover from this. We're going to go on board with three and see what could have happened. Gates open. Caught the bow, caught the bow. Oh, yeah. Caught the bow. Whoa, we just went around. What happened there? Boy, that's a hard hit. Yeah, but that tire popped right there, so he ran over something on the racetrack. So this is Dakota Armstrong down. You can see him heading to the grass. Ross Chastain up on the high side, up into the wall. Didn't quite see the beginning of that, though. Uh, it looks like it has all the makings of a pass trying to happen with Dakota Armstrong on the inside. Uh, gets a little loose beside that car. Oh, that tire pop, and that's what keeps a crew chief up at night, probably a driver as well. When we talk about a championship run, make NASCAR, what is so different about NASCAR? The mechanical is very good. He won. Devastating blow here, Ty Dillon. Just kind of buying her time. Some of those guys are getting by me on the restart. Saw the caution come out. It wasn't for us, it was for somebody else, and uh, all, all of a sudden it popped and uh, hit the wall pretty hard. So I just uh, hate it. For these guys, hate it for Yingling, hate it for all our sponsors, but uh, I'm so proud of my guys anyways. We've done an awesome job. Bounce back from their team. Currently the running, oh, oh, we have a hard crash on the back stretch. The 14 of Kale Conley, heavy contact. And it looked like the 15 of Stanton Barrett as well involved. DJ, that's a Dover wreck if I've ever seen one. There's nowhere to hide. If you spin on one of these straightaways, if you don't get caught in the outside wall, the inside wall will get you. You see here, 15 car has a fire under the hood. Drove it right to the safety trucks. That's what they actually inform you to do in the driver's meetings. If you can, bring that to the safety workers. Now he needs to drop the window net and get out. Yeah, don't make them chase you down. Get us quick, get there as quickly as you possibly can and then get out. They weren't racing for position either. So it'll be interesting to see the replay as to how this came about between Stanton Barrett and Cale Connolly in the 14. It has the here makings of something happened coming off a of turn two here and, and drivers racing for position maybe just didn't clear. Let's see. Well, we have the 15 getting sideways and then Cale Connolly just in the wrong place at the wrong time, unfortunately. And this is going to be a hard hit because I think I end up, I know where Cale Connolly is going to end up. I've seen this play before. This inside wall. Ooh. Yeah, there's there's safer barrier there now, which is a great move that, that the Speedway did and NASCAR um, mandating that, that that happened. So certainly not as hard as it was, but still a hard, hard lick. Now, Lee, what do you do? You have enough fuel to keep running. Rain is right on the edge of us. As a crew chief, you're Kyle Busch's crew chief. You probably need some tires, fuel and tires, to, if you're gonna continue this race. But if you're farther down, are you gonna stay out and think it might start raining under the caution? You, we saw this, David Rudiman years back, yep. wins the Coca-Cola 600 by not doing anything. By staying on the racetrack, that same opportunity perhaps could present itself today. This is gonna be a line in the sand for a lot of these race teams. Yeah, there's no reason for someone, uh, uh, Jeremy Clements back in 15th spot or, or Brendan Gaumbach 
back in 17th, still in the lead lap. No reason for them to pit until they know this race is going to go back to green. If I'm Ben Rhodes, with crew chief Dave Ellens, perhaps I stay out to see if it rains. If it doesn't rain, I could come in. I do lose my track position, but I could take a little more time fixing the body, getting ready for that last 90 lap run to the checker. So, Mr. Daytona 500 winning crew chief, what would you do if it, you were in charge of the 54? If I was in charge of the 54, I'd session think. problems for some of the crowd favorite cars. Here's Brian Sellers, the number 17, two-time defending race winning Falcon Porsche. Treacherous conditions in qualifying. We're on board here with Brian. He just touched this is the deep water there. Hands off the wheel as he hits the tire wall. Big damage, a lot of work overnight to get that car on the grid. And they weren't the only ones. Porsche RSR factory cars have just been dynamite all weekend. But the 912 car got off. Bent the frame, couldn't be repaired. A substitute car was brought into play. They are quick. In the second hour of the race, Richard Westbrook powering through while the 912 behind him suffered an apparent left rear tire failure, went off, but was recovered. That corner has certainly claimed some victims. This was a very, very slow progression to the wall for Oliver Gavin there. He got sucked in by that red clay and had no option but get all the way out of those three, tires. To show at ground level the way these trucks haul the mail off into the corner. Got a trouble up in turn four. Oh, and there oh. goes Tyrio hard into the wall. And that that's Reddick in the 19 that had the problem that kicked it all off with Tyrio as he comes grinding to a halt on the front straightaway after a huge heavy impact here on the front stretch oh that man. was bell drum but it's just it's great he hit it a ton to see that he's been able to communicate with the safety workers and extricate himself with a little bit of assistance from that truck i would sit down too that, yeah. that's scary looking there's red a high yeah. in turn four loose just about has his truck saved and along comes terrio at that right front tire. Yeah, really nothing Austin can do. And, at all. And Tyler Reddick, he, he was just fighting to regain control of his truck. I don't know. We didn't see if anything uh, maybe clipped Reddick and sent him sliding sideways. We just caught it as he was up there fighting for control of that truck. Saw him doing an amazing job hanging on to it. Oh, that's so man. scary. It's such a sick feeling for Tyler. Watching his teammate yeah. turn go turn into the outside wall right in front of him. They got the helmet off of Terrio. Giving the crowd a thumbs up. You yes, he see. was doing that. Driver not to go there yet. We oh, already the 23 into the wall. That's Jeb Burton. Jeb might not have made contact. It looked as though he was right up against the wall, but Burton brings out the first caution. 36. Nothing to tore up. Right in front of Matt, uh, Martin Truex Jr. had to go to the tail of the field. Looks like the 23 of Jeff Burton and the 32 of Josh Wise just get into each other, getting into turn one. It ends up, the 23 does a great job not getting into the wall. Really, like you said, very little damage. So pit road is open. The competition. So you get right here. So oh, and into the wall, the 23. Jeb Burton in the 23 in the wall. The caution right down, will come down. out. Slow down. Clear all the way down. Clear it down. Right front tire is down. We don't know if that happened prior to getting into the wall or after getting into the wall. It's that part of the run where you would start to see tire failure at this racetrack. Like we talked about earlier, it just punishes the tires. Uh, it's very difficult, limited practice. You didn't really get a chance to set your cameras and everything exactly like you wanted to. So, already up against the wall. Yeah, it has all the makings of a right front tire. It's hard to say from this angle, though, what got him into the wall. But like Jeff had mentioned, late into a run here, that's when you start to see if you're going to have an issue. Normally, you would see it almost at a fuel point. This really hurts is the 15. We had Clint Boyer on pit road a, a few laps ago with a potential issue. It ended up being a loose wheel. So he scored two laps down. Paul Menard has scored two laps down. A lot of chase guys who needed good runs today. Got a fire here. Just pull up here to stop. Pull up here. And going up to the opening. On up to the opening. On up to the opening. Pull it over. Pull it over. Bring it to the firemen so they can get out. 
put the fire out. Safety crews are located at the opening, so they want to make sure that they can get to that car quickly. Yeah, when the car hits the wall that hard, it rips, rips the brake lines out of it, it rips things off, and it starts to burn. So typically it goes out by itself. Normally it's not a huge deal. We see the firemen out there put the fire out. The driver hates that. That is, uh, that is hard to breathe. When all that starts spraying, is is hard to breathe. Coming on to pit road, got a little bit tight between the 19 and the 41. This was the two entering pit road. See the 41 trying to gain ground up on the 19, getting into pit road, gets into the back of the 19. Uh, that's just a driver trying to push the issue, trying to be as close as you can. Plus, there was a little bit of oil down there. We heard Kurt Busch talking about from the from the Jeb Burton incident. Third, because of the fact that he is the race leader, and caution has come out for the 47. AJ Allmendinger. Derek, yeah, I was watching the 47. He entered turn three, attempted to come to pit road. Find there on pit road. Just carried too much speed onto the apron and lost Clint control. Boyer, he will receive the free pass. This is A.J. Allmendinger trying to get onto pit road, trying to slow it down. Well, that's a bad feeling. Door side to the oncoming traffic. Moving up onto the racetrack, that is not a good feeling. And Steve, as a crew chief, we have 89 laps to go. You had said earlier, 80 to 85 was our pit window. We're just outside of that. Will someone try to stretch it? Oh, I think they're all going to have to try to stretch it because I believe this is going to be the last pit stop, assuming we don't have another caution. Right. Four laps outside the window. We saw last week at New Hampshire how aggressive everybody was. I think this is no different. With 89 to go right now, uh, pit road wasn't open. We're going to run say one. how more. loose his race car was. It was a handful and uh, a big handful for the 34 car, Rick. Brett Moffitt up against the wall will bring the caution out. This could be big for Dale Earnhardt Jr. If he did have a loose wheel and they did need to attend to it. I don't see any fluid yet here. Could be a very big break for the 88 team. As we look at the damage to the right side of Brett Moffitt's car. Four. You see him up in front. And by the way, that's up in front of race leader Kevin Harvick. Oh, that's a big hit. Bernie, Bernie watch him. Stay low. Stay low.